Hello, welcome to Rivers Lesson 9, and in this lesson we're going to look at hard and soft engineering again, but we're going to kind of compare the two in a bit more detail. So, which strategy is best? So I'm going to look at some examples. Um, I've got some videos from down next to the, the river near me, and we're going to look at some examples of hard engineering and some of soft engineering and compare them to see which one uh, might be best. So, um, the River Ribble flooded in February of this year, so I've just got some images here showing some of that flooding. So you can see the farmland being flooded there. Um, the river was actually under some of that, that water somewhere, you just can't make it out, there was that much water. Um, again, you can see the water nearly making it up onto the path there, where that picture was taken. Bit of a comparison, so the picture on the left was when the, the flooding was happening. And the picture on the right, um, I took this week. So you can see just um, how high the water was. The picture on the right, you can't even see the river. And then you can see there just how close the river was to flooding um, that path on the right-hand side. So um, what we're going to focus on is why did more of the houses near the River Ribble not flood? Okay, so I went to find out what strategies are being used. Hello, welcome down to the River Darwin. So the first of these soft engineering strategies is what we call floodplain zoning. So using the floodplains and allowing them to flood. So if you look to the right of the River Darwin, you can see the levee on that side has been made slightly taller than the levee on the left hand side. So when we do get a flood event, all of the farmland that's to the left here will get flooded and that is a much better option because the farmland is much cheaper than the um, expensive buildings which you can't quite see but on the right hand side of that levee. So that's our first soft engineering strategy, it's using the floodplains and actually allowing them to flood. So here I am further up the river Ribble. On the other side of the river there is another soft engineering strategy and that strategy is afforestation. You can just make out some of the kind of the small cylinders and inside those cylinders are the new um, kind of small trees. So it's only been recently done on that river bank. So the benefits of that afforestation will not be seen for another 15 or 20 years when the trees are much bigger. When the trees do get bigger, they will obviously kind of intercept some of the rain, but the roots of the trees will also strengthen that river bank on the other side. So there'll be less erosion taking place. So now for some hard engineering strategies. You can see in the video here that there is a quite a large embankment which is on the outside of the meander. So all when it's a big flood event, all of the water will push up against that wall and it will protect those houses which you can see behind it. So the embankment is that example of hard engineering. Um, it would be really effective if they did this all the way along the River Ribble, but you know it's it doesn't look fantastic, and it would be very expensive to do. Even though this um, embankment here stops those houses from being flooded every time there's really heavy rain. So now that we've looked at some examples um, from down on the River Ribble and River Darwin, it's time to kind of put this into practice. So what I want to do is I want to answer this question. Hard engineering is more effective than soft engineering. Do you agree with this statement? So the first thing you need to do, so in paragraph one, what are the benefits of hard engineering? So you've already got down some notes from last week. You've got some uh, extra information from today's video. And then I also want to write that paragraph. Why is it better than soft engineering? So say why it's the better strategy, really. And you've got some sentence starters there. In paragraph two, what are the benefits of soft engineering? And why is it better than hard engineering? So I want it to start off really balanced, so one paragraph for each. And then in the conclusion, what is your opinion? Okay, so after you've looked at both sides of the argument, after you've looked at both strategies, you might have looked at your notes from last week. I want you to write a nice answer, so two big paragraphs and then a conclusion with your opinion. Okay, so um, watch the video answer that question in detail for me please and then complete the quiz that's on show my homework.
Hope you're all well and hopefully see you soon.